Thank you. Welcome everyone to the City Council meeting for May 8th. If we could uh, call, have a roll call to establish quorum, please, ma'am. Peg Adamson. Here. Terry McClung. Here. Missy Kendrick. Here. Bob Thomas. Here. Vicki Schneider. Here. David Mitchell. Here. We have six. Stand and recite the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, get a uh, motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Second. I would uh, like to defer the discussion of the sewer committee. I'm not prepared. Where do we get to that point? Okay. Um, oh, do we have to second that? Yeah. I second it. He seconded, but okay. nobody got any further. Okay. Anything else? Um, I have a couple of handouts that are related to the... Um, uh, Relocating the city meetings, a different place. If we can handle that when we get to that point. Yeah, I just wanted to add it because it's not part of this. I don't think. We're talking about discussion relocating city meetings. Yes. So we can have that. Okay, good. Hand out at that time. Yep. Okay. I'm sorry it was such a delay. Uh, anything else, Bob? Yeah, I'd like to add uh, budget process discussion. Okay. Do we need a second? I second it. But what got deferred? I wasn't. We item was, one, sir. Committee. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? All right. All those in favor of the agenda as amended, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Get a motion to approve the minutes for April twenty fourth. So moved. Second. Any additions, corrections? If not, all those in favor of the uh, minutes as submitted signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, so move. And approval of the special meeting on April 21st. So moved. Second. Any additions, corrections? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. That brings us down to uh, commission. We've got a uh, application by Wendy Super in for the HDC. It's in your file. So if y'all <laughs> want to take time and bring her up, talk okay. to her next time, we'll bring her up for a consideration. Uh, all right, and we still. <clears throat> I guess that brings us to public comments. Good evening. I'm James DeVito, 5 Center Street. Uh, for 25 years, I've uh, lived in one of the most progressive communities in Arkansas and probably the Mid-South until a couple of weeks ago when this body failed to pass a no-smoking ordinance for city parks. It's this body right here that has made Eureka Springs the forefront of progressivism in, in, in probably the entire South, if not the entire Midwest. First tree city in the United or in Arkansas, uh, the first with recycling in Arkansas, uh, first B city. Uh, you pass a anti-discrimination ordinance that was one of the first in the South. Uh, Y'all should be proud of what you've done, but for some reason, you uh, couldn't get a no smoking ordinance through at your last meeting. You have the opportunity tonight. One of the four uh, of you who voted against it, you have the opportunity tonight to bring that back to the table. It can only be those of you who voted in the negative. So uh, there's a lot of people in the community upset uh, because uh, we feel that, uh, A, it's all right to be able to breathe clean air in our city parks, and our parks are our refuges to get away from all of those other things. So it's very important that we are able to enjoy our parks. Now, uh, in this part of the country, less than 20% of the population is smoked smoking and it's uh, dropping all the time. 
Uh, for some reason, you got a little uh, off base on the marijuana issue. Uh, state law is specific. Uh, there's uh, no public smoking of marijuana, period, be it medical or recreational in Arkansas. You can go to Article 6 of, of the, uh, of the uh, amendment to the Arkansas Constitution. So that's already covered by state law. Yet in the area, we're being passed up by cities like Harrison, Huntsville, Green Forest, they've all passed ordinances prohibiting smoking in their city parks and here we are the leader of progressivism in, in the state and probably the Mid-South and for some reason we failed to pass this ordinance that, that goes to your directive, the safety, health and welfare of the community that you are uh, implored to look out at for us. We don't have the ability, and I can only relate a couple of instances in Basin Park where uh, very nicely we accosted a couple of people, said, please, there's no smoking in the park. Uh, one guy threatened to take it out in the street and uh, get in a fight with me, and I'm not the only person that this happened to. The police have no enforcement on the park's ordinance prohibiting smoking in the park unless this body passes an ordinance giving the police the authority, the influence that dictates that the park have already established. So take advantage of tonight because this is on, the only opportunity. Uh, you know, don't worry about crafting the perfect ordinance. Get the best ordinance you can get put together and throw it out in the world and see what happens. It may have to come back for an amendment, but at least make the effort to do something that's important for the health, safety, and welfare of this community. Thank you very much. I appreciate all the hard work you do and carry on. Thank you. Bye, James. <laughs> Butch, while we're waiting, I don't remember. Do we add that to the add something like that to the next or for tonight? We can do that next meeting. Okay, that, that's why I couldn't remember we had to talk on it tonight or not. Right. Okay. <clears throat> uh, all right. Um, Next order of business will be a discussion of permit holders and ordinance number 2223, Ms. Kendricks and Ms. Adamson. Well, I had asked uh, the city attorney to let us know, render an opinion as to whether 2223 requires people holding per permit, uh, special event permits to comply with that ordinance. And I... Can you give me an answer tonight? I can give you uh, a partial answer, or what I consider a partial answer. 20, uh, 2223 applies where it applies, but it doesn't apply to everyone because it has exceptions within its own body. And so you would have to judge it by who holds the permit and what, whether they fit into one of the exceptions or not. So... There is no clear-cut, yes, all permit holders have to do this or all permit holders do not because of the own uh, exceptions written into the original ordinance. Would you consider a parade, for example, to be a place... Sorry, I don't have that in front of me. Uh, a place of a public accommodation? A parade potentially could be, but it also could be, uh, based on how it's applied for, a freedom of speech exhibit, and it could be, say, a mass wedding. Mr. Which they do do in certain other cities. Motion to discuss. Thank you, sir. Second, I'm sorry. No, that's okay. Uh, can I can 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 someone give me an example? Because I'm really not sure I understand what's going on and where it's trying to go. So, Ms. Kendricks, my my say. concern was in, uh, for example, um, the Jesus Parade that is um, excluding certain churches from the area from its parade. Last year was the first big one that was bad. And how do you know they're trying to exclude anybody? Did they say so? Yes, yes they did. Emphatically. Thank you. 
Um, when we have a parade, invariably the whole city is involved. When it's a private situation type parade, as Tim said, like if it's a wedding, which we've actually had wedding parades, and only the wedding people and those they want to invite are permitted to do it. The Jesus Parade, as it's being called, was the first big one put down, hosted, whatever you want to call it, primarily pushed by the Passion Play. And because they didn't agree with a couple of churches who allow gays and lesbians in their church and let them be active members and stuff, they forbid various churches to join them in the Jesus Parade because they were saying that wasn't what Jesus taught. So in some circumstances, especially on a parade, it would have to be considered a private entity and we cannot touch its freedom of speech. In other cases, we have to say it's a city-related and you have to behave. It's one of those, It's like Tim said, it's, it's really hard. It goes actually, both ways. I don't think the Passion Play didn't apply for that permit. That was applied for by individuals. Yeah, I don't know who applied, but it, they were the ones who Let's don't get it. confused. Mm -hmm. That's okay. This, this, is, this that. was directly toward uh, the religious belief, and mm -hmm. that's the exception that Tim's referring to. There's uh, businesses in town who have uh, one business is, is marrying them, but they have another business, let's say, selling wedding gowns. They're willing to sell wedding gowns to anybody, and they have to, but they don't have to marry everybody in that facility. That's the difference. That's the privacy thing. So, I mean, it's, it. it's not a big well, deal, I don't think. Where do we stand with the state on this, anyway? Well, we don't know where that stands right now. Freedom of speech is that's still, still, that's still, still, still... It has not ever been. That's still... It hasn't been. been. It that's hasn't been. It's all covered by freedom court of speech. said one thing, and now they're kind of appealing it to see. They haven't gotten okay. any final. Well, then, then, then could if, and if we restricted, if we restricted a group, a, someone that got this permit to do something specific, and excluded others, and if we said no, you can't do that, could we not also be in in violation of two 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 three because we didn't let them? There, so I mean, it's a catch twenty two. So. so. I don't, I don't know. I don't get it. Where are we going? Didn't we pass a non-discrimination ordinance? That's two, 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 three. Yeah, but if we tell people, just, I didn't yes, we did, but we can't tell them not to because Mickey, that's discriminating. Mickey, Mickey, right? Let let David finish, please. Well, that's what I thought two, two, three was. So I can see where it's it's a private parade applied for by individuals. They're asking to parade in the city, down city streets. Uh, boy, I, I guess, you know, just, we'll go, probably just leave it with the city attorney and hope he's right, because I don't want to run foul of, of state or national law, but it still bothers me that 223, we, we worked real hard to, to get that passed took a lot of heat on it so that we don't appear to be a, a discriminating community and we're very diverse and welcoming and then we turn around and screw it. That's, that's just all. Well, um, I'd like to respond to that just a little bit. Yeah. If you're going to say that we're going to control the content of the parades and let anybody that wants to parade in me parade, what are we going to do when the VWs want to put their parade through town and every other kind of car wants to join. Are we going to enforce the VW Club to add them? Or the Miatas or any of the other car clubs? No, we can't, no. <laughs> I just, could you clarify for me what is a private parade and what's a public parade? I, I don't, I, I, public parade would have to be sponsored with public money. The city and stuff. So private. Uh, Any cities sponsor parades. Uh huh. Spend their own money for parades. So, but the relig the religious exception is only part of what is built into two two three two three. And it was what the people in the city passed and approved. It does have those exceptions, but it has other exceptions to it. So the Miata parade would be a private parade. 
Is that I correct? don't know that we can tell them that they got to put a B and W leading their parade. I'm still confused on what the. I'm never. I just never thought of a parade being private. Well, so they're a public event because yeah. people see them, but right. they're put on typically and paid for by a private organization. I am not suggesting that we regulate content. I never have suggested that. I am more concerned about discrimination. And there's a the the ordinance that was passed by this council is not talking about any kind of discrimination. There is lots of discrimination that is valid and is not excluded by this ordinance. What is excluded by this ordinance is discrimination based on the classes that are listed in that ordinance, one of which is religion. And um, so that is my concern. Our parades that occur on public property that are excluding people. I am not talking about the content of the parade, only that they are excluding people from the parade. Okay. Antique car parade, isn't that sponsored by entities in the city? I don't remember. I know it has chamber. been and it hasn't been, but okay. the chamber, well, that's an entity of the city. No, no it's a private, private business. No, it's private, private business. The chamber's considered a private business? I know, it's considered chamber, a city. The chamber is a private business. Okay. Well, that was one that came to mind when you were talking about public versus private. The big problem with discrimination, and I've had to point it out to other people in our town who were very vocal against allowing, let's say, motorcycles or motorcycle garages that they can't be non-discriminatory and fight for non-discrimination and turn around and do it themselves. So they were fighting to not discriminate against gays and lesbians, but they were fighting against allowing motorcycles. That's discrimination. And I've pointed out to them several times, you can't do one and then turn around and when it suits your need, do the other. You can't, it's, it's all or nothing. So either nobody's allowed to discriminate or why do we even waste our time? Other than the fact, of course, that's a national law. But that, that's the problem, which is why you have to really get into the private situation of like a wedding parade and that kind of thing. That's where it gets really testy. I understand what you're talking about and I don't like it you know what you're describing but I kind of feel like the people who are organizing a parade that would exclude others they're really just showing their stuff they're showing what they really believe in town and it shows me as a spectator that, oh, they're not really very inclusive and I kind of just might stay away. Um, I, this, this is all, it's not legal what I'm thinking, but I, I don't see the commonality between gay people and motorcycles. I don't see it's that at all. It's not, it's not the same. Cars and people are not the same thing. So I'm just saying that if if there is discrimination on their, um, they don't need to, they're showing their stuff, and it's part of free speech. Mm -hmm. I don't see it as, I see it more about the people, and you can, you get the picture, you see a parade like that, and you think, I think, oh, what, one, why would I want to be in it? And two, why would I even watch it? Exactly. If, um, they were doing this, but I think they're allowed to do it because it's the United States. Period. And Eureka. I mean, that ordinance is an ordinance for Eureka, but it's really just reinforcing what United States law has deemed correct. That's my opinion. David? It's hard. Ideally, it's very hard. The city shouldn't get in business of legislating morality or contents of private parades. We shouldn't be in it. I but agree. I would definitely say to those citizens or people of this community who believe in diversity and equality and all of those things that we hold dear that 
standing on the sidewalk as the parade goes by and protesting the parade and bringing out the alternative facts would be very beneficial for those people because they have the right to protest. And I think that would probably be more effective than the city getting into an area that would probably not be beneficial for us. I see there, and, and I don't agree with that, in, in that, in that if, if, a, if a group wants to have a parade, and just because I don't agree with what their deal is, they have the right to do it, as Peg said, and, and what gives me the right to go and scream and yell at them and protest to what they're doing? I don't. I, I think that is uh, that serves nothing but negatives. First Why do we hold the sign, Mickey? I mean, that's just. Not to scream. Uh, let's kind of wrap this up somewhere where we're going. So, the, so, so the question boils down to: Is the city staying out of the business and letting permits and private businesses? As far as parades go, it's my opinion. That yes, based on. Conversations with the city of and, and then my last comment to that was that I think what allows people to protest anything they call to is called the First Amendment. Absolutely, and, and that's not to say I agree with it. I think the people. I think it's fun. It's not funny because it, anytime you discriminate, it's not funny. But I think the people can look and see the groups who are protest who who yeah. are doing the the parade, and then they can see. I think it's just very ironic, and I think the citizens of the people can see that for themselves without us doing anything. And I don't think, actually, they're not doing anything because it is their religious belief. Mm -hmm. and that, as they're saying, that is their right. Mm -hmm. That's the reason we can't say, we can't go after ministers. You can, if you're, there's just, like I mentioned, there's some shops in town who feel very strongly about it. Mm -hmm. they're, they're not going to perform the wedding, but they'll be glad to sell you the wedding dress or take your picture. Mm -hmm. And people won't do their business with them, and that's fine. Mm -hmm. That's their right. I just want to say, in terms of this 2223, I was not here when all of this went down, and it was very divisive in town. But I think there's an opportunity here to maybe even talk to some of the parade makers about inclusivity and non-discrimination and maybe having a discussion about why not change your mind a little bit? Why not open yourself up a little bit to um, including others who are, I don't know what the parade is about. It's about is it about? It's a religious parade. It's a, a religious parade. To be inclusive in that religion or religions um, that maybe I would be interested in going to that church. I have no idea if that you know churches. If they, churches uh, maybe I would be interested in going to them, or people that I know would be interested in doing that and kind of coming together on it more than separating. I don't mean to be a thorn. Right. <laughs> what I'm having a problem with it is that we're doing this on public property with a public permit. And if we, if mm. uh, if Muslims, for example, came and asked if they could put some sort of a religious um, a, a emblem in Basin Park, the same time that the Christians put the baby Jesus there, we would have to do so. And why are we allowing people now to have a parade that includes only the baby Jesus and maybe not the the Quran? And um, it. And there is a difference between discriminating and discriminating. The discriminating I'm talking about is that person's real or perceived race, ethnicity, national origin, age, gender, gender identity, gender expression, familial status, marital status, socioeconomic background, religion, sex, sexual orientation, disability, or veteran status, not motorcycles. Um, yeah, I'm sorry, but that has been used, that kind of a situation. Well, there is a lot of cars, four wheels, but not two. Come on. It's been used. It's been used. There is a difference between discriminating against motorcycles and other things and the things that are listed in that ordinance. It's discrimination to say four, not two. Mickey. 
All right, anything else? I'm done. All right, so we're going to move on to, uh, you want to update on the item three, update on North Main Park? Get a motion to discuss. Yeah. A second? I'll second it. Okay. Um, last week, last two weeks, last council meeting, um, we had a uh, public comments about the um, condition of the uh, North Main Music Park. Um, and yeah, you know, at the time uh, we had some people there. We're well, not here. People have been taking care of the park. Volunteers on there. This area um, is one of those areas that fall into cracks. It doesn't belong to the parks. It doesn't belong to public works. It's a city area. It's a city property. Um, the last administration took it upon themselves to uh, make it a, quote, music park and applied for a grant, but there really wasn't any body that was designated to take care of it, per mm. se. It was based on volunteers. And, you know, bless our volunteers, because the city wouldn't operate in town without the volunteers. Um, but this is a an area that uh, has fallen into the cracks, but as soon as it was mentioned that how bad the place was looking, um, it came to the attention of some individuals and they said, we'd be glad to help and do something. We didn't know that there was anything that would need to be done. We weren't aware. We were afraid that there wasn't any water down there and we couldn't water plants. Um, the Public Works has, as part of their street budget, has gone in and, and does some maintenance work down there. They take care of cutting the trees and, and doing some maintenance, minimum maintenance down there. We have several areas in town that fall into the same cracks that aren't public parks and aren't really public works, but they're city property. Uh, for example, Chris Fisher and Kelly Clark, local residents, have been, uh, along with uh, Faye and Michael Shaw and several others in town, have adopted an area between First Street and Armstrong and call it the five-tier area. And they planted trees up in their native plants. And it's an example, in my opinion, an outstanding example of the citizens, not only in town but outside of town, coming together, volunteering to make something look really nice for the city. This is an outstanding parks area that they've done up there and planting trees and, and just doing a great job. Uh, the same thing, I think, down on Main Street. We've gotten some people down there the musical instruments aren't that bad. They're still, they're not the best, but they're not bad. I mean, I'm getting some eye, eye look here. We don't have any money. The city, as we all know, unless, you know, we're, we're coming up with some money to, to maintain some of these things, so it's all volunteer effort. The grant that we had made and, and presented these things, but we didn't get any, we don't think about once we get a grant, as we well know, and I've pointed out before, once we buy a fire truck, that's really nice, but how do we pay for the insurance on that fire truck? You know, and some of these other items. The same thing with these other grants. They're maintenance issues. And so the volunteers, and there have been people since this has come up, have volunteered to pay, donate some money, donate plants. And so I think we're going to see some effort down in there. The alternative of making a parking lot, you guys, city council members, you're, you're part of the budget process. If you want to spend twenty to thirty thousand dollars to tear that out and put in a parking lot, well, that's your alternative, you know. But it's going to cost a lot more money to do that, and I'm not in favor of the parking lot there. Actually, I'm more in favor of the green space and what we've got. Kind of, I see people out there all the time when I'm driving by playing in that thing, and we take people there, so it's something for us to to work with. The problem is trying to find money to maintain it. But it's citizens' involvement. I was walking down the street the other day, and again, and I'm going to I'm going to name her by name because Margie Anderson uh, has a shop up above the Basin Park a little bit. She was sweeping the sidewalk. It's not her sidewalk all the way down past Basin Block Building on her own at eight o'clock in the morning, and she's doing this as a volunteer person because she wants Eureka Springs to look good. And she does that every morning. 
And so it's the same reason that people like Chris Fisher and, and Kelly Clark are doing the projects up on there. So we need citizens to come forward instead of saying, let's tear it down and put up a parking lot. Let's see what we can do to make it better. I mean, so maybe it needs some little drumsticks. I mean, I those things disappear, <laughs> but they're made out of wood. But, you know, some of those, that item down there is still pretty neat. So anyway, um, but the Public Works has said that they will come back and they were a little busy <coughs> with a rain system that we had. And so they've had not had time to take care of it. But if you go by, and I don't know if you've been by the last couple of days, but it's been cleaned up yeah. and it looks a lot better. So unless the council wants to make an effort of making a parking lot, I would suggest let's try to get the volunteers to help and promote the city as the best we can. David? It, so are you saying that they have a faucet, that they have the ability to put a hose on to water whatever they plant? Yes. Thank you. Yeah, there, there's water available down there, and, okay. and, uh, and it's out in the, away from there. And we had it locked because sometimes people will take advantage of free yeah. water, too. Got it. But we're willing to work with people to get that taken care of. And Mickey? A hose to your house. One of those things to keep in mind is that far down, it would have to be free parking, pretty much just like that sure. other little one is. So we would expend all that money and have no return. Yeah. Whereas this way, we have usable property for kids, families, whatever. All right. Right. Um, I did notice that with the uh, mention by Lee Lujan that about the park and how it was not looking so hot, it looks really good down there right now. I mean, it's all tidy and stuff. looks good. I, I'm hoping, like, he's got a picture of a dead tree here. Um, I hope that the dead trees will be removed so that other trees can be planted or plant um, but I still have problems with musical instruments down there because it, it I know people really enjoy it and I when I first came to Eureka I was down there plunking away on stuff too but then I talked to the woman across the street and it drives her nuts here in the plunking at you know 2 a.m. yeah you know and so I'm wondering if there's any way to take the stuff and move it to up the just a matter of money well or whatever is it money or volunteers that you're saying well, if you had a volunteer to move, move it to moving something it would be money we ran into an issue what about taking them out all together still be money somebody's going to have to take it out and it's a grant and I don't know what the grant does I mean that's almost and I'm not sure that's Could we solution. put signs? I, I, I agree. I've heard complaints from the lady across the street about the noise. And I was uh, wondering if we could put signs up that would prevent people from banging on those things after, you know, 8 o'clock at night until 8 o'clock in the morning. Most of the time, and I don't know if they're doing it late at night because it went, it's, we don't have a lot of light down there except yeah. for the mm -hmm. parking lot. Mm -hmm. And when I was down there in the evening, uh, it's still daylight when I participate so it's not a, like a lit thing mm -hmm. so I mean, we can always put up signs but uh, you know it you know no matter where you put a music park if there's a residential area you're going to be bothering somebody yeah and signs are going to promote being evil yeah <laughs> anyway that's the status right. of that <laughs> Mr. Mayor yes sir I just would like to say I don't I don't I could poll the people at the table, but I'm not sure that there was a whole bunch of people wanting to make a parking lot. Our concern was the disrepair of, of what was there. And well, what, what I heard was, let's make a parking lot out well, of it. That, that, that was, was this thing. Yeah. 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 But yeah. That, that was, was you know, the intent of, of discussing it. But I, I, you know, I don't think in the past and in other situations, volunteers are need a little bit of organization. You know, it's like you can't just have somebody volunteering today because they may be gone in a month mm -hmm. you know how how is it going to be how is the, there's got to be some organization to it i think the people that are interested in working on it they have will be able to organize themselves i'm not going to go down there and direct them no know. i'm not talking about directing them but, just, but you're just you're comfortable just saying yeah. okay and if they move and, away and, or and if they just the get tired work, of doing public it public works has, has said that they will help out with maintaining some of the I'm sorry, what? Who? Public Works oh, has okay. said that they'll help maintain it, too. Just one other thing. If the volunteers are there that don't have any kind of guidelines, what would keep them from adding a whole bunch more 
instruments and you know I think miming. they're looking at gardening rather is that what they're doing? that's we're talking well, about that's gardening. all I wanted to know was if they're there would be a quiet the percent. grant the grant was for the music park so these people are not interested in Putting in tambourines and, and and drums, they're more interested in making it a garden I'm park. Asking, that's all. I, and, 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 I'm, and I'm just, no, I'm just really like <laughs> the people that I've talked to are more interested in doing a park. Yard work. All right. Garden park. <coughs> a garden park. A garden park. All right. Park. As far as I know, that's the only music park that we have that's dedicated to any kind of instruments down there. So, is there going to be more music? There isn't there a little band thing? I, that's, I have no idea on that. You know, that's there for available, but I don't. I think it's only been used once or twice. Is there electricity there for? There is electricity okay. there. Awesome. And there stands there for speakers, so people can have music down there if they want. You know, all right. And it's available. All they got to do is. Let's do but it. But they'd have to get a permit, wouldn't they? Can I take my rock and roll band down there and set up anytime I want to? Probably, but you got to get a permit and you can't <laughs> discriminate. Oh, forget it. <laughs> I ain't going through all that anymore. And if you discriminate, you're finished. You're yeah. I'll, just, I'll we'll just go bust her on the street. That, that's, we don't have to know All right, any further, anything else? All right. Yes. Um, all right, uh, discussion of relocating city meetings. So moved. Peg, you had some things you wanted to throw uh, out there, I too? I just wanted to add to it because um, Laurie Smalley um, had sp spoken about the ADA compliance, mm -hmm. and she sent me this email, and I, it, like, I got it five minutes before I came here, and then I made copies. So I wanted to know if I could hand these out. She has a suggestion for a proposed meeting building. Um, a metal building of approximately 20 by 50 feet, and then she's got ideas that are uh, pass in it, there. Pass it out. Okay. Is this number four or number five? Four. Okay. It's also about the, a meeting building. Is this an, an, an existing building? Um, no. This is it brand would be a new. a brand new building, yes. I Does she have a location? Pardon me? Does she have a location? She has a suggestion of a building, oh wait, a, a location by the police station. <laughs> um, and, yes. The, the, lot next next, to, yes. Yeah, the lot next to the police station is for sale for about two hundred and some thousand dollars That's perfect for our uses. Yeah. Wait a minute, what? By the police station on Passion Play Road? Yeah. Uh, is there any property at the police station at all for such a building? Well, anyway, I'm bringing it here. She didn't know. I didn't know. And I'm bringing it because it's another addition and another option. And I can tell you, just for the council's general concern, 20 by 50 thousand square feet. Uh, it may be enough, may not be. But you're probably looking at Roughly a minimum of a hundred and up to a hundred and fifty thousand okay. dollars for construction. Is that insulated heat and air, or is that just the bill? That's about a hundred hundred dollars a square foot minimum to to make it habitable. Habitable, okay. plus plus the property. Okay. So this metal, if, and if that's assuming that there's water and sewer available. Okay. So the this one metal at the passion play uh, by the police station. Oh. Uh, there's sewer there and water, so that wouldn't be a problem. So okay. it's all, you'd only have about a two hundred thousand dollars. This cost. metal building wouldn't be one of those prefab. Well, you'd also have to Denise? add because of the H, that's yeah. outside the historic district, but but you'd have to put a facade on it so it wouldn't look like metal. Yeah. I mean, but is that what they're talking <laughs> so it might about? One hundred twenty-five dollars a square foot. One hundred twenty-five thousand. Okay. So you might have around three hundred thousand dollar investment. Miss Kendra. Well, it seems like there are other alternatives available. I mean, just jumping to mind is the Clear Springs School, high school, the old one. Well, I have, yeah. I don't, in, your, in your packet, <laughs> I think there's a floor plan in there. Well, there that's what that is. Uh, <laughs> and this is a proposal that uh, I've gotten and drawn up from uh, for the community center on the Yes. West end of the community building it used to be the uh, East, East Lab. Lab. Yeah, 
uh, and it will seat approximately 50 people. It has uh, handicapped toilets uh, available. Most also remember too, anything we do besides City Hall, with ex unless we want to spend another twenty to thirty thousand dollars, will not have live broadcasting. Uh, in other words, like what we're doing right now. Now that doesn't mean that we won't can't tape it and show it later on tonight or in the morning. That can always be done at any facility we go to. Uh, a lot of the facilities, if we're in other facilities, we have the problem of, of and we go through this every two years, or every four years, of putting up and taking down the, the, the uh, camera and equipment, which is wear and tear and isn't easy. Uh, the East Lab, we can permanently set up our deal. It would be for every commission that the city has, HDC, planning, cemetery, all of it. Uh, their costs right now, what they're figuring, their proposal is would cost us $20,000, but that would give us free rent for two years. And then after two years, approximately $1,500 a month payment for rent for all the commissions. Not just city council, but that's for approximately 15 meetings, Yeah, three days a week. Yeah, we have meetings roughly three days a week, uh, every week. So 12, 12 about 15 meetings uh, a month. Bob? First thing, your introduction said the community center people came to you and asked you to draw this up. Is that what you said? Or what? No, I didn't say that at all. Oh, what did you say? I'm sorry, I missed it. I said the community center, and I've talked about this, and this is a proposal. That, that to, you're proposing to them or they're proposing to us? Or I'm what? proposing to the city council as an alternative for an ADA accessible oh, okay. meeting space. Well, then... That, their, but, their suggestion, their proposal was to us that they would give it to us for $20,000, mm -hmm. and that would be rent-free for two years, right. and after that, a $1,500 a month payment. Okay. For rent. And what now we would have to do some site work as part of in kind contribution. There's some sidewalk, a little road work that needs to be done. Have you is there a list of what the the ADA uh, that would meet on? ADA that would meet ADA what, what what you know, have are there like ten things on here that are that make it ADA accessible? How are you evaluating this building as, as, being, as an architect I'm saying that's ADA accessible. Okay. Because why? Because of my experience in doing ADA, that's wheelchair. <laughs> it's wheel. I, would, I don't, don't want to get, in, don't want to get into this yeah, right. right now. Well, I do. Just, just accept for me, in my opinion, that that's an ADA accessible. Well, what I'm saying, Butch, is if I look at another building, what does it have to have that this Handicap, building has? Handicapped bathrooms, wheelchair chair accessibility. Okay. Uh, three O doors. Three what? Three O. Okay. Three foot right. zero inch doors. Uh -huh. um, and you know also some guy you know depending on your side and things like that. There's a list of items okay. that have to if be. If we took twenty thousand dollars and, and spent it on the auditorium, could we not have all those things in over there? The auditorium is already accessible. We don't even have to spend twenty thousand dollars. And why would we spend twenty thousand dollars? Bob, to I'm not saying why we should. I'm not proposing one way or the other. I'm saying here's an alternative. Okay. It's for the city council to consider. Well, we have another alternative: is the auditorium. Okay. I'm not saying that the auditorium bad or good. The auditorium. The, the good news, bad news is, auditorium is also being used sometimes on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesdays, or Thursdays. So we've got to have something that's fixed yeah. that we can depend on for a... But the auditorium schedule could be shuffled. They could be clear Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. No, not always. Not always. Mm, we have we have performances I'm coming in that we can't... Uh, the Folk Festival, the Blues, uh, I don't know, Mr. McClung, you want to... They have to be on Monday night? Certain things they are. Pardon? It's not, you're talking are. about city council. I'm talking about HDC, Planning Commission, 
Right. And all these no, other I'm, I'm saying Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. The folk festival has to be on a Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. Sometimes. All right. David? Okay. Well, CAPC just went to a lot of trouble to hire a very high-powered events coordinator to fill that auditorium. So I think we need to be conscious of what we're doing there. Do you want it to be a meeting room or do you want it to be an auditorium? And I do believe at some point there would be conflicts. But besides that point, my question about this is, I'm, and it's one proposal, but just to clarify, to help me clarify what you, you said, because I understand it's a proposal that came from the, the group over there. They sent it in to us, and I appreciate very much the work that put into it at this point. But I can't, so 20000 is going to get us the renovation of this area to make it look like that, yes. plus the free rent. So we don't have to put any money out or any labor to make it look this way. Are they even going to put the chairs and the that's, stuff that's in there? counting the furniture. And everything. And paint. That's a turnkey walk in. And that includes utilities and all that stuff. Correct. And we could, out of this <clears throat> space then, we could go to taped meetings that appear on YouTube after the fact, but not live. Correct. And the reason... We can't make it live over there. You said there was a cost, and I, I, I can't remember why that Cox is. Cox Cable. Oh, Cox Cable. Brings their video into this building, and they come from East Mountain. Got it. In order to go anywhere else in the city for us, it would cost twenty to $30,000 for them to wire it. Got it. Okay. Thank and you. they have cable there, yeah. but they don't have the specific cable that we need for video. I think that helps explain it to people who would ask that question, and so I understand. Thank you. Okay. Mr. McClellan? Could you, could you live, live stream the meeting? Not that one. You're probably the only one who knows what that means. No. <laughs> on Skype? Like on Skype? Wow. Well, I don't know. I think you do it on Facebook. You live stream on Facebook. Excuse me. I don't know. I mean, you know. But well, I'm, I think that's a minor detail. I mean, well, I think that's a kill. I, I have no matter where we go, we're going to have that issue. This, uh, the East Lab, you're talking, that's, that's, that's the building on the end of the gym, is that? Correct. Yes. That is the old cafeteria room? Beyond mm -hmm. that. It's got its own separate entrance that goes into this building. The band room. room. It, it's the band like? room, mm -hmm. okay. which is between the old cafeteria and no, it's the gym. Father's Den. Farthest one on the west end. Band so cafeteria gym. Yes. On the it's end. right by the road, old Roadhouse Cafe. It, okay. I'm sorry? Yes. All right. And Where? The old Roadhouse Cafe. That's right. Okay. Right yes. It's now a massage it's, place or something. Right, road kill. I'm road sorry, kill. Road kill. It's, <laughs> it's the only, I mean, it's the farthest yeah. portion of yeah. the yeah. School cafeteria gymnasium. It's on the corner of Kings Highway and 62, across from the end of the Ozarks, uh, hanging at the end down there. Yeah. Yeah, it's all connected, but yeah, yeah now, that's correct. What What is the dimensions of of, of it? But it, it doesn't have it on here. You know, and Terry, I don't, I can, I don't have that right off the top of my head. Uh, I just put 50 seats in there to see if there'd be enough room for 50. Uh, well, that certainly. I, would think I want to say more 40. Than I want to say 40. I'm, I'm going to lie to you. I don't know, Terry. Well, don't then don't to. lie to me. Just say you, don't, you said it. Uh, you don't I don't know. know. That's, that's fair enough. Yeah. Um, okay. I'm just. I don't know. Uh, Twenty thousand. I'd have to think about that. Well, this is all thinking. I'm not asking for any definite thing because we do. We can consider the other auditorium, Miss Kendrick. I think the possibility of having people here with us and sitting in a in, in mm -hmm. a configuration where we can all see each other and the audience is way, way more important than having us on TV on Monday nights. I think it's much more important that I can see my constituents than they have to get back to me later on. Um, I propose that we go look at this place as a, as a workshop to go look at it to see what's actually going on since it's getting closer to being I mean this is the closest I've seen to the thing um, I have a question about the 20k 
and the other repairs that have to be done, and I'd like to bring those up at, because there's parking accessibility that has to be built in to get to that room. And there's a sidewalk already coming down through there. It's not quite, it's not accessible, but there's another spot where concrete sidewalk can be made and it can be made into accessible. Well, and right. I think that those, you know, you just, you talked about the North Main Park not being, you know, turning it into a parking lot costs so much. How much is it going to cost to retrofit the parking lot to the, to the room? I think this looks awesome because I would really love to have the public have the opportunity, the choice, to come or to not come to the meetings and making this a really public forum. You know, it'd be, it just adds so much to everything. Um, but I, I make a, I would really like to go over there with us. Okay. Mickey? Did you ever get a final talk with them in regards to is that fifteen hundred a month strictly for those three nights a week or does that make it our room for the month? It's it's the city's <coughs> room to use for meetings. But it's not our room solely. No, it's pretty much our room solely. So in other words if on a Friday somebody wants to rent that room, they could. I didn't get into that aspect. Okay, that, that, I don't okay, know. That's I didn't what I had brought up. That's why I wanted no, I didn't to hear know you say that. I, I don't know that. we're in the rental business. Because um, that's, that's right now, that would be number one to find out. That makes it our room for Because we don't, or not. we don't rent this room out in, or right. any of our other rooms either. Um, for that was space. the problem when I talked that's, to them. This is a city for city commissions. So that's a room for city meeting. Check. I don't um, think this is a place for the, um, you know, fraternity organization to meet there. Check. Um, Mr. McClendon. I'm not done. The sidewalk thing, all it is is putting in an ADA compliant sidewalk from the existing parking lot and street that would go down the main door, comes like here, and it would come across at an angle right here. Um, and like I said, it would access the parking lot and the street. Mr. So I'll take care of that. It'd be all right if I pull the visitors that are here tonight and see what they think. <coughs> oh, because I'm <laughs> sorry, they're not here. Ms. Kendrick, um, I I agree that I would I think a workshop would be a good idea to go. We can it. we can meet up there prior to our next council meeting if you want. Site visit would be nice. Beg your pardon? A site visit would yeah, be nice. Yeah, that's no problem. Because I have, oh, the question for, for Tim. When I first came on council two years ago, you were, you had been drawing, I think, the bathroom out North Main, and then you got elected mayor, and we had to do, like, a special resolution that authorized you. It, does, is there nothing on, when a commission member is involved with the ownership of a, of a building, is there nothing that we have, you know, some... When you, the city wants to contract with that that organization, oh, like renting from a commissioner? Pardon? You mean like renting from exactly. a commissioner? Exactly. Yes. Renting, if a commissioner themselves is going to make a direct profit, there uh -huh. would be a problem. So we would have to see their financial statements to see if he's a, a paid employee. Are you, are you referring to Bill Featherstone yeah. in the uh -huh. parks? Right. Bill is representing something. That just on the park, so I don't think there's that. That's what's my. I'm, I'm asking issue. Tim. Well, if we're right. contracting with an entity, as long as that entity was nonprofit, yeah, we're probably not a real problem. Mm -hmm. And this is if a 501c3 entity. Is the, if, even if the the even if the commissioner and I have no clue would, was paid a salary as a, on the board of directors of that organization. I can tell you they're not being paid any yeah. salary. I haven't seen the yeah. financial statement. I can, I can guarantee no. you that they're not being paid any yeah. salary. Mm -hmm. No pay. So, I mean, you can you can do the what-ifs, but the what-is is it's not true. I didn't say it was true. I'm just, I was I'm asking a question. A, I'm, just, I'm, I'm just making a statement 
that there are no salaries being paid to any of the people involved right. with and my that. my question to our city attorney was if there were salaries being paid. <coughs> would you please just let me, I don't know why you have this thing with trying to... I'm, I'm sorry, Bob. Go ahead. Okay. If a commissioner was paid a salary as on the board of directors, would there be a problem? The council would have the opportunity to waive the conflict. Right. We, would we have to waive the contract? If there was one. Right. Okay. If there is, if there's a state, before anyone can make a profit from the city that is directly tied to the city, the council has the opportunity to waive or not waive, and has done that repeatedly for people to be hired or not hired by the city. Great. Thank you. Does that answer your question? It, it does. Thank you. Right. You're welcome. <laughs> David? To move this along and move away from extraneous comments and personalities, I'm going to make a motion that uh, Council explore the community center option by uh, an on-site visit within the next 30 make days. It an 60? hour at 5 o'clock at the next, uh, prior to the next meeting? Uh, yes, yeah, I'll, add, I'll add that to the motion. Uh, we, we got a budget meeting, that's true. Uh, oh. I'd like to just have a point of order. I don't. I think it's inappropriate for you to describe any comments made by other people at this table as being extraneous. That's not your decision to make. Okay, Sometimes okay, Mr. Bob, 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 point your point there, of order is there's directed. There's my point right there. Your, all right, exactly. your points go to the chair, not to each other. Um, I still have a motion, don't we I? We do, and we, we do have a conflict with the budget meeting at 5 o'clock, or 5.15. I'd be glad to cancel the I, budget. I, I, <laughs> your motion. May I clarify the motion? Absolutely. Um, that we go see it prior to the next meeting? Is that what your motion well, I was, is? I was, or, or as a great, the, Yes. He, he brought up at the next meeting. I was thinking with at least within 30 days, but I like the next meeting. Okay. And I, yes, ma'am. I second your motion. But it's a budget meeting. That's what the problem before, was. Before. Before. Budget meetings at 5.15, so when is it? We could defer, huh? We can make it at 4.30. That's fine. Okay, 4.30 at the, uh, okay. Motion's been made that we have a side visit at 4.30, um, and I'll arrange it with uh, the people with the community building uh, for a site visit. Mr. Mayor, are we going to meet here and take a bus up there, or should we all meet there? Uh, let's all meet there. We can. Okay. Yeah, we'll walk up there. That'd be all right. Walk? Uh-huh. All right. All in favor of having uh, the May 430 side visit prior to the next meeting, say so five by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Thank you all. Oh, are we supposed to be done with that then? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, Much, are we done with that? With with the build with the um, yeah, with the city meeting spot. Okay. Well, I was just, I was just going to add one more goodie that neither you nor I thought to talk about how much standing room there was for the once every three or four years when we have a huge huge meeting. There's lots of standing. Yeah, room. Well, there'll be quite a bit. In addition yeah. to the sitting part. Okay. All right, update on, again, uh, get a motion to discuss, uh, update on ADA compliance. So moved. Oh, second. Uh, first of all, I want to thank Lord Joe, uh, LJ, for coming forward at the last meeting um, and asking some specific questions. Um, we have been dealing with um, ADA issues for a long time, I think more specifically in, in trying to get more uh, involved, certainly within the last two years. Uh, one of the issues we've been dealing with, and, and we've been going round and round forever, is, is the uh, public meeting space being held in accessible areas. Uh, I think we're, we're seeing that. But the larger topic, too, was uh, that Laura Joe brought out was what is the city doing? And she ended up n noting several things that the ADA requires. Uh, one of them is we have to have a designated employee who is the ADA compliance coordinator. The government is so good about making all these requirements and then putting requirements of staffing. Uh, 
And so among all of our staff that we have at City Hall, um, I ended up nominating and, and uh, having Kim uh, being the ADA compliance coordinator Aww. in addition to her other duties. <coughs> uh, Does it come with a raise? <laughs> well, Good. Now your chance. I, I've, got, I've got her a new chair that comes up a little bit higher. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to get a crown. She's already got a crown most of the time. <laughs> and a whip um, that she uses completely. Um, but the other issues are um, that we adopt a grievance procedure that pertains to ADA matters. Um, this is a, a part of our self-evaluation that uh, we're going to have to be doing and we'll have to get the city council present to the City Council for adoption and for their approval. Uh, we're using the Arkansas Municipal League's compliance guide to help us draft it in that effort. Once we get that completed, then we'll come back before the Council and show you what we're doing and, and ask for your blessings and, and uh, approval on that. The City is supposed to complete a self-evaluation report, and this is updated every three and a half years. Uh, again, that uh, this is, was suggested that we put this information out on the city website. The city has never done, uh, we have done a self-evaluation, but we haven't done a, a thorough evaluation according to the municipal league. We've done some as on an as-needed basis, you might say, regarding parking lots, parking, uh, other issues that come up, we look at, and, you know, it's, it's almost like the Band-Aid approach. But we're going to go ahead and formally do a compliance report and a self-evaluation that, we'll, again, we'll be presenting to the council. Uh, and, of course, you know, the, one of the big things, too, is that uh, LJ pointed out is that, you know, we need to have all public meetings in an accessible facility. Uh, that has been the hardest thing. Uh, both Mickey and Terry have been on the council for a long time, and this has been an issue that's come up for 10, 12 years, uh, and we've looked at everything we can. Uh, I think we've gotten a couple of options available to us now that make it more realistic than we've ever had before. Uh, but because of our terrain and our historic buildings and where we've been, it's, it's been difficult. Yeah, so, to say the least. Uh, but I really do want to thank uh, LJ for bringing this out. But that's not to say, you know, again, that we've, we've been ignoring this. Uh, I think, in fact, you know, we've, we've been trying to do a lot of things without patting ourselves on the back or, or making a big to-do out of it. Um, you know, like the, uh, we provide more handicapped parking than required. We have more handicapped parking spaces. Uh, we have free handicapped parking spaces that are not charged for them. Uh, and so, you know, that's to, again, we're trying to make the effort to <coughs> making our handicap accessible known. Uh, and, and I'd say that, and one of the issues that we've done, uh, and again, I don't know, I think I pointed out to you the last time, uh, we've got signs coming up that are going to be noting the handicap parking locations and handicap bathrooms. One of the things that y'all the last administration did uh, with Mayor Morris Pate was establish uh, building a new restroom on North Main that became handicap accessible. Uh, and we also have the handicap accessible bathrooms in the trolley station right adjacent to the uh, courthouse. Our others, too, unfortunately, they're not handicap accessible. One of them is, was built, I don't know when the one Pendergrass Corner was built, but uh, it was built prior to any ADA knowledge or regulations, uh, so you got to walk down the steps and do it. Uh, the other ones are in the auditorium, and again, just because of space limitations, it's impossible to make ADA compliant. But we still have ADA compliant bathrooms in the city that are city bathrooms. Um, the ones that are um, not accessible, the two that I mentioned, the Pendergrass Corner and, and the uh, auditorium, we're making signs that are being put up on those bathrooms uh, that so people who are handicapped accessible can locate 
and know that there are handicapped accessible restrooms available in the city. So it's um, unfortunate. Uh, it may not be right there, but we, we are doing what we can to make ADA compliant people. We've had issues of wheelchairs in this town for a long time. Uh, and so that's uh, the issues that we've been going through. But we have making and are still making strides. And, and we will continue to do this. This is not just a, uh, a stop measure issue. We value and understand uh, the problems that ADA people go through. And we want to make all of our visitors welcome here, plus our residents. We have several residents uh, that are um, in, hand, in wheelchair or are deaf or, or other issues, blind. We have a woman who has a blind son. We've had a couple of them around here. And so we're trying to make our Eureka Springs more available for them, more enjoyable, and especially for our visitors. David? Going along with that, the CAPC recently looked at uh, an app that's being developed by a local person here. And the app would be a citywide app. And part of that presentation he gave at the last workshop at the CAPC was the fact that this app will have on it the ability, and it's a free app that anybody can uh, hook up to their phone, starting with the iPhones and then going to Android right after that, uh, that, looks up, that, ha that shows you all the handicapped areas. So going along with your map and all of that built into this app is, is a, a section for people that have a handicap to help them with their handicap to find the bathrooms and the various other things that are available, along with an unbelievable amount of information about Eureka Springs, one of the most update, complete, citywide, non-restricted uh, calendars for, for people. And as soon as CAPC moves a little bit farther into securing that app and the contract, we will ask the developer at some point to give a workshop for council so you can see it. So you will be as impressed with this. This is phenomenal. So uh, for, for the mayor, I, I think the developer has done a great job in, in taking the handicap stuff and the discussion you had and moving it into that app. Okay. Um, I think that's great, the signs and stuff like that, and following up. I, is this a part of this? I guess we are discussing this. Um, I still have some huge issues, and I know that I keep getting thrown back about the sidewalks. I can't walk in Eureka Springs. It's very difficult. And I wish that there was a way to make it comfortable to walk in town, you know, so that I don't have to use a crutch to walk around. Um, but I see people stumbling down the sidewalks, and I realize that the, the onus of that is put on to the building owners that have the sidewalks in front of their places. But it would add a lot to the comfort and movability of this city to have comfortable sidewalks and breakouts. I think that there, there's quite a few breakouts on uh, on Main Street. I think there's one, is there one up on Spring. Mm -hmm. um, and several. pardon me. There's several. Yeah. And so I think that would be really wonderful too to add to the the whole big picture of really helping the city get up to a a level of 21st century while still being an old place. And I have one other thing: if this building is owned by Carroll County, why aren't they held responsible for making this adaptable, even if this is an old building? But you know, it seems that they should be the ones putting in. Um, you know, like a ramp up the stairs to get up to the courthouse, making bathrooms ADA. That's their responsibility as our landlord. Just putting it out there. It is their responsibility. Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's a historic building. Well. And it's also, because it's a historic building, it also, according to building code, that uh, they, it's not, it doesn't have to comply with ADA. I, I find story. that very difficult. Well, you know, I can, if I, I, can, if I can, make, let me finish. I can show you in the code where in building code it says this. There's a specific area in there that talks about ADA and historic buildings. We may not like it, but it's in the code that way. Now, we have also, on behalf of, of the county, I know the county has been applying for an elevator 
grant. Uh, I think we're looking at two hundred to three hundred thousand uh, dollars to put an elevator in from here to go up to the, to the courtroom. Uh, again, it's just money, uh, but a lot of counties have the same issues we do when it comes to the courthouse, um, county courthouses, and a lot of them are historic and they are unfortunately. Uh, you know, they're not required to come into compliance with the ADA. That just, to me, is uh, not right. It really isn't right. Well, Mickey? Um, I'm wondering what would be the possibility, and Timmy might want to really listen, to ask a couple of the local businesses, and right now I'm thinking maybe some of the bigger hotels in town on Spring Street, about making their handicapped bathrooms accessible from wheelchair-bound people from the sidewalk to be able to go in to use theirs up on Spring, since we have nothing. What the possibility would be if this is even feasible, legal, or safe for the city? Because there's a couple of places I can think of offhand that I know wheelchairs can get in there if they would allow that, but I don't know the protections that the city might be involved in if something that's, that just becomes a private business. Well, that, that's why I didn't know if they could volunteer, which would get us off the hook or not. It wouldn't get us off the hook. I mean, they can always volunteer, and it just shows good graces for the county. And most of them probably do have handicap accessible bathrooms, possibly. There's two that they're I can think of that open, do. They're just not open to the public. They're, they're well, that, open that's to what I'm their, saying. What would be the possibility of us it's, getting it's them to, to offer them. this to the public without us being on the hook? We really don't have anything to offer. No, just offering them to be good guys and offer this possibility to our visitors. They can do that on their own right now. If they wish okay, to. could we bring it up to them without going on the hook? Anybody in the city? I you mean, you're going on the hook, but you're asking them, some of them, to take on some pretty major liability. Well, that's what I'm and wondering they if it would change. Want to do that without getting something for it, other than just the goodwill of that they could already get by doing it on their own. We can give them extra advertising. And in fact, many businesses <laughs> in town make a note that they have they do not have any public restrooms. Well and that's shops and restaurants off that's why I said hotels. Because so, I know they've yes. got them and it's accessible and but it's I think in the right like place. Mr. Weaver was saying a lot of it's the liability that comes along with okay. it. Okay. Well it's something we might want to kinda of talk okay. about. Um is this something that we have to workshop some of the, the notes that you made to discuss the policies and stuff of the of the city of compliance. What? Well, talk to Kim. <laughs> she has a whip. Yeah. What would I want to talk to her for? <laughs> <laughs> we, when we get farther in through here, we may end up with a workshop. It's a, you know, let's let's wait and see what what our policies are. I mean, we're going to be complying with the ADA, so there's not going to be yeah. much much arguing. So it's, it either is or it isn't. I won't argue now with with the, with the county. It's a, it is a county's responsibility, and they've been notified. We got a we got a letter from a fire marshal who talked about that, and uh, we. When did that happen? Uh, last month. Somebody called the fire marshal and said we weren't ADA compliant, and we wrote back and said, <laughs> "Talk to this county." Also, you're the fire marshal. This doesn't have anything to do with the fire code. You're dealing with ADA, and the fire marshal doesn't have anything to do with the ADA compliance. All right. <laughs> fire marshal is strictly for fire. <laughs> anything else? All right. Um, next item is uh, get a motion to uh, discuss first quarter financial report. Second. All right. Well, I was enthused, wasn't I? I see. Okay, for the first quarter of 2017, <clears throat> we have the check register, <clears throat> excuse me, receipts, payroll, 
and the debt service this time was uh, listed on the front of your March summary at the bottom and the back page of the March summary was the bank balances so those are the five points and of course you're welcome to come and look at any of it thank you Anne. thank you thank you all right our next item is a resolution uh, for the step grant for the police department. Motion to discuss. Second. Mr. McClellan. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to assign this resolution to the number and have it read for passage. Second. Any discussion? Peg? Do you, can I ask Terry a question? Well, what, why don't you ask me what the question well, is? Well, I want to know what this is in just in a nutshell I can read it but that's pretty much what you this is for the police to apply for a state grant for twenty thousand uh, dollars there's no matching funds available this is something that we've been uh, we've applied for uh, almost on an annual basis that the uh, and it's called the Arkansas State Police Selective Traffic Enforcement Program um, and they use it to you know identify highway safety issues uh, to help them out with the police department to make our roads safer. Ms. Kendrick? Do we have any residual liability if the grant is misused? Is what? If, if Do we have any residual liability if the grant is misused? Probably we would have to pay it back if it's misused, but okay. I've never ran into that What issue. kind of uh, I mean what terms are there to the grant? What do, what do we have to do to uh, perform in accordance with the terms of the grant? Now that I don't know. I'd have to have Thomas come here and ask him to answer that. You know. Vicki? To the best of any of our long-timer knowledges, have we ever had anything misused? No. I didn't think so. I'm not so concerned about misuse, but I wanted to know more specifically how to how do they track it? You know, it's sort of like with the uh, the when we wanted to pass the one percent sales tax, there's going to be a tracking device on how that money is spent, and I just want to know because I'd like to know. This money, is, as with all grants, will go into a special line item budget. Okay. And can only be spent for that. Uh, so they do research on crashes and anal anal analysis yeah. is what it is, mainly right. statistical analysis. And and submit that to the state. Okay. Yeah. So they do that, and then do they correct where these crashes go? Is that part of the grant, too? No, not for the $20,000. I mean, there's not going to be a lot of grant there. I don't know. I think there's more identifying areas that could be awarded than you apply for additional monies. Okay. If there's issues. But it's, it sounds like it's more of an IT thing, you know, like they're doing statistical. It, it, it's more IT and, and more analysis okay. and identification. All right. Yeah. All right. Any further questions? All right. Uh, all those in favor? What? I have a question. Is this for passage? Yes, yes ma'am. Mm -hmm. Okay, sir. so in that case, I need to do a roll call. Mr. McClung? Yes. Ms. Kendrick? Yes. Ms. Adamson? Yeah. Mr. Thomas? Yes. Ms. Schneider? Yep. Mr. Mitchell? Yes. 6 0. This will be resolution 710. A resolution authorizing the chief of your East <coughs> Springs Police Department to apply for and, if awarded, accept a grant from. Arkansas State Police Selective Traffic Enforcement Program. Whereas the City Council has determined that the City of Eureka Springs meets eligibility requirements necessary to apply for a grant under the Arkansas State Police Selective Traffic Enforcement Program step. And whereas the Eureka Springs Police Department would, if awarded, use step funds to identify highway safety issues in order to reduce crashes, fatalities, and injuries, and whereas the City Council recognizes the need for the project, concurs with the project's importance, and supports Eureka Springs Police Department in the effort to proceed with the same. Be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Eureka Springs, Arkansas, 
that the police chief is hereby authorized to submit an application of formal request to the Arkansas State Police Step Program for purposes of securing state grant funds in the amount of $20,000 to aid and assist the city of Eureka Springs. There are no matching fund requirements for this grant. The mayor is further authorized to administer the grant funds for the same project if awarded. Yeah, thank you. All right, uh, the last item is uh, budget review process discussion. Motion to discuss. So moved. You got a second? Wasn't that yours? It's mine. Second it. I'm almost scared to, but I'm going to. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. And it's it's not budget review process. It's just budget process. Oh. Okay. And this come. I'm just wanting to suggest that we consider having a defined process for how the city council would like to have budgets developed every year. Not. I'm not talking about 2018. I'm talking about a process because some of us won't be here in a year and a half. There's going to be all new elections. When I came on city council, you know, I was asking around, well, how, how, does, how does the budget get here? How do we do the budget? And there was no process. I know some of you are looking at the mayor because you think that the mayor does the budget, which he does. But... Mr. Mayor, it's very disconcerting when people roll their eyes while I'm talking. Go ahead. Don't look at them. So, I come from a background as a school principal. I developed a budget. I administered it, and I was responsible for it, just the way the mayor is. But I did it on the timeline and under the guidelines that the school board gave to me. We are the fiduciary entity that is responsible for the money in this city. And I don't think that it's, I think that it's very appropriate for us to, to have a defined process of how the budget is developed. Because sometimes, I've seen on TV when I was sitting at home watching, you know, the mayor come in at the last meeting in January and hand out a budget, and it had to be approved by January 30th. We need to avoid that situation when there's a different mayor. Yeah, actually, t mm -hmm. to avoid the problem, if right. you direct your comments to to me. Then well, I'm talking to the council because it's a council process. I'm talking no, about the mayor submits the budget to the council. Correct. And then the council goes there. I'm the one who develops the budget. Correct. That's what I and said. Then I give you the budget and the council, and then y'all disseminate it. Right. Now, you, while y'all handle that, you want to handle the process, then. That's a different thing, but I'm the one who develops Correct. the budget and the process. I'm I the see. one who develops it from from the department heads Correct. and then presents it to you. Correct. I, as I said, from my experience as a school principal, I developed the budget and I administered the budget on the timeline and under the guidelines given to me by the school board. If we had one one statement that said, in order to realistically review and understand the budget, we need it the first meeting in December. That's a process. All, that's all I'm asking for. Yes, ma'am. Sorry. <laughs> you want to go ahead and carry the meeting by? Uh, yeah, can I have so, a uh, Sure. Let's zip I'll it up and to. play it. Good grief. Um, my understanding of how we do our budget, and I could be totally wrong, even though I've been involved in this forever, is department heads give their list to the mayor during a meeting that shows you know their breakdown of what's needed and how much and then he says uh cut it by ten thousand <laughs> you know whatever and then it all gets doesn't lonnie get in here somewhere lonnie and then just, lonnie, lonnie is the finance director he does all this and then we're the last step and yes for years and years until like last year or something or the last couple of years um we've had a budget review like the first part of January instead of November or December. And it's hard. It really is. But as far as I know, that is our process. We've got our guidelines. It's the way it's supposed to be done. It just doesn't always end up being convenient. Well, I, I guess I, I need to see the guidelines and, and, and I'm I've, sorry for I've, bringing I've never even yeah. asked for them or if we even have them in writing. I, have, I just know basically what we do. Thank you, Mr. Mitchell. 
I think probably the biggest thing, and that was at the last meeting or the last council, we asked you, and we got the budget a lot earlier than had been maybe in prior years. And it came to us. I think we worked with Lonnie, and I thought we asked for it around up in December. Yeah. And I understand when you start a budget process, you, you start at the, the, the ground level. So obviously with department heads, it works its way up. It, you put in some administrative task, which is the mayoral responsibility to it. The financial director comes in, puts the data in. You work off historical data. So there, there is a, a, a process that may not have been identified. But the point of matter it is, is that it comes to council and the opportunity is there to question. You've put department heads in front of us before so we could be very specific with them about things. So council has and retains the accountability and the responsibility for the financial health of this city through the budget process. They have all along and, and they still will. So I have been comfortable with that up to this point because I always felt we had the input and the ability to question anything at any time. According to the law, you have to receive the budget by December 1. That's part of the process. Uh, and I try to get that, and I've encouraged, it's not always easy, but I've tried to encourage and get you the budget prior to that so we can see because I know it takes longer than 60 days because we have to approve it by the end of January. But I try, by law, and that's a process, you have to have it by December 1. But I try to do that sometime in October, getting the process started October and November for you guys to have the budget to work off of. Mm -hmm. Okay, did you have a comment? Mm -hmm. Well, since I came in on this in January, and then being presented with the budget like it's got to be passed or whatever fast was pretty shocking um, to me. And to have it, you know, like letting the department heads know now <laughs> that the uh, budget for 2018 is coming up and needs to be presented for December of 2017 will be really helpful because then it gives you time to talk to everybody, you know. Find out exactly, and so if that I don't know if that happened because I was I wasn't here either to, to see the proceedings, but um, it would be helpful to me. If it takes me a while to process this information, and you want me to be up to snuff. Unfortunately, new council members always are at a I loss. Just, yeah, uh, I know. Miss Kendrick came in because she had the luxury of coming in two or three months earlier, yeah. so she had a little bit. Head start, mm -hmm. but she realized I think uh, that it the process and and we are going through that process and I um, you know and again uh, we're going to be coming up with our mid year budget and review and I'm trying to get that done in the past and some of the council members may remember too sometimes the mid year budget didn't get passed until October <laughs> which drives me to no end. I remember those I, days. You know, so I'm trying to because of my. Um, being upset over things, I'm trying to make sure that they get done on an earlier basis. But I'm also discovering that it's not as easy as what I think it is. So, thank you. Well, and on that note, um, we know by the second, the night of the second Tuesday or the first Tuesday of November, which councilmen are still going to be here or how many new we're going to have, which technically gives us two whole meetings because we usually have one meeting in November and one in December but that gives them time the newbies time to get up to speed because traditionally it's not the law but traditionally they come to the meetings workshops whatever so they're up to speed in the past and I want to say it happened like 10 years ago and I was on the first time um, the sitting council approved the budget as far as they could and then had to turn it over to a whole new slate of councilmen who decided. So that does happen. So they were ready, but they didn't want to accept what we thought was okay and started from scratch and had one month to do it in. So, you know, it's got pros and cons all over. I would love to see that delayed by three months. Yes, sir. I understand the process. 
that Mr. Mitchell described about the department heads and starting in line, that's your process. That's totally up to you. I'm not trying to infringe on that at all. What I'm talking about is what does the city council need to do its job well. And maybe we need, maybe we, and this has, you know, this is long term. This would be forever until it's changed. Maybe we need the budget at the, the, November, the last meeting in November. Maybe that's our process. There, 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 we may have some needs it's separate from, from this. State term. law says December 1. But we can, we can have, we can write, it doesn't say that you have to obey it. It's, we're not making a law, we're setting a process. This is what we would like to have. This is the best way for us to do our job. That's all I'm saying. But if, you know. Mr. McClellan? As I recall, we had it before December 1st last year anyway. And, and we have it before December 1st every year. We got, we've, got, we've got a working budget usually in September or October where it's starting to formulate and come together. Uh, you've got your, you've got the department heads. The mayor has the department heads working on it, and uh, and so I mean it's it's come, it all comes together. I mean I think Bob is looking at a process timeline in 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 and maybe what our responsibilities are and our responsibilities of the council are to to fine tune that budget once it's presented to us and then and then ratify it for the coming year and. And you know there there is some blind faith involved there is that in that we're not we're not we don't sit in on each of these departments and we're not an active part of these departments so you know we just have to go with what is presented to us and and look at what last year did and and, and then go with it none none of it's cut in stone that's why we have the mid budget review. And so we can make the adjustments we need to uh, this summer, and 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 we have workshops to take care of those kind of things. I don't know what else. I don't know what else we can do. I don't. I don't get it. Okay. Um, are we asking to have something more concrete? Is that what you're asking? Is to have a more concrete thing? To, for presenting the budget, you know, like a, a specific date, the, the last meeting of November, or specifically have to have it the first meeting in December. Well, I'll, I'll, I mean, but you say that there's only one meeting in December, more one council meeting in December. Usually, usually, and that doesn't give you much time to look at the at the budget. <laughs> you know, there are special meetings. We have we we can have workshops, and special meetings, but. Again, Is that part of the process, though, to, to say we're going to have a it, workshop? It's up, to, it's up to the council. When needed, we've done it. The state law says you have to have the budget by December 1, yeah, and well, I try, and my impression's always been trying to give that to you prior to that. Ms. Kendrick? I would like to suggest that Mr. Thomas has some suggestions as to particulars that he would like to have instituted that he bring them to well, the council. I don't think that this council is capable of moving away from us and Butch Berry. And uh, so I'm just going to drop the topic, you know. I'm I, I don't understand what that means. Me Can, what it means is, you know, it's, it's if I say let's try to do this, it's, I, I'm very happy with the way Butch has done the budget last year and the year before. I've been involved for two years now. I think I'm going to be happy with the way he does it this year. I'm talking about a process that's in place so that the next the next mayor who's elected before he's elected says, this is what the council expects of me before he even runs for office. And, and people who want to run for council would say, this is what, if I run for council, this is what I'm going to be doing. That's all I'm asking for. So basically you want it in writing, so to speak. Yes. Do we have it in writing, the guidelines? <laughs> we have it straight law. Okay. Mm, that's not I mean. Let's let's see if we can wrap this thing up if we can, please. I understand the process. I've got that, but I don't think it has any legal standing that would apply to the next council unless we made an ordinance out of it. And I'll ask the attorney. Well, what the mayor's been telling you is that there are already guidelines set down in state statute. Yes, mm -hmm. you could pass an ordinance 
to adjust those, whether they would be then suggestive or whether they would be requirements, you'd have to determine as part of your ordinance. My question was, a process would have no legal standing on a, a, a council after us. It would have to be by ordinance. If, it, if you wanted to enforce it, it would have Thank to be by you. ordinance. That's, that's what I wanted to know. I think that people are looking at something much more concrete than I was talking about. I'm done. All right. Uh, oh, part of the handbook. Next, that's uh, all right. We're moving on to uh, agenda setting. Mickey. Okay. I tried getting a smoking workshop after we voted no, and that didn't pass. So I would like to add to the next agenda um, a discussion slash ordinance that would be done for non-smoking in Basin Park so the police have a leg to stand on, however you want that worded. Uh, Only for Basin Park? Yes, because that is the biggest problem right now is the police can't do anything because they don't have an ordinance that says that they can arrest, you charge, whatever. You want to do Basin Park or all the city no, parks Basin within Park. the city? Let's Minnesota. start with Basin Park. That's the only place right now that we have the okay. thing to work with. Can I get a second? A second. Okay. You might want to wait a second. Ooh. Somebody's okay. smoking in the park. <laughs> so that was an ambulance. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> somebody <laughs> somebody dying. No. Uh, um, all right. Any other agenda items? Uh, all right. Uh, will the, yes, excuse me. Will the sewer thing come back next? I I would like to maybe have a month for that. Okay. So you're postponing until the first meeting in June? Yes, please. Thank you. Okay. I've had some other unexpected business that has occupied me. Uh. All right. City council comments, Mr. Thomas. No, I do. I want to talk about the uh, Memorial Day activity in the cemetery okay. that we've got planned. This year we're going to have what we're calling the uh, Memorial Day Cemetery Walkabout, which is, we've defined like a one-mile circle around the cemetery. It is uh, as wheelchair accessible as it is walking accessible. Mm -hmm. The roads, the pavement is not in great condition. But as you go around, you'll be going through different stations related to Memorial Day. And it'll start with, well, the flag goes down at dawn to half mass, but at noon the flag goes back up to full staff. And at three o'clock there's the national moment of remembrance. So our Cemetery walkabout will be from noon to three o'clock on Memorial Day. On Memorial Day, right? Did you say one o'clock? Noon to three o'clock. Oh, I'm a good one. And there will be lemonade and cookies, and activities uh, that'll you know if you bring your children with you, there'll be activities that'll be fun for the family, but all related to the more Memorial Day concept, which is honoring the fallen heroes. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Bob. I have to also say I was out there last week uh, putting up some uh, stuff on our family plot, and the cemetery looks real good. It does. It looks, yeah. it looks nice. Uh, Miss Kendrick? I love lemonade. I look forward to it. <laughs> one for <three. laughs> Just one? Yeah. I have no other comments. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, no, I just wanted to thank Peg and everybody that for that uh, the fence in the front of the cemetery. That is dramatic. It is a big difference. I can't wait to hopefully you get it sprayed and sanded yeah. or whatever and painted because that is a huge improvement. Mickey? Um, Mother's Day is coming up next week. Happy Mother's Day, everybody. 
And happy birthday to my husband, who's going to be positively, absolutely antique on Mother's Day. He turns 70. Maybe 50 years old? 70. <laughs> he is old. <laughs> He's older than me. But his birthday is on Mother's Day this year, which is really kind of cool, I guess. So happy birthday, dear. Thank you. Um, I wanted to say another round of flowers has come out, which is the uh, <laughs> flocks, the wild flocks that are all around. They're just lovely. Uh, and I want to be sure to bring them to liven up our discussions here at City Council. But I also want to say thank you for a great weekend with the Mayfest, with the uh, the work in Basin Spring. I really, I don't think Lorna Trigg has gotten enough recognition but the dancers and everything were awesome. Their costumes were awesome. The whole weekend was, I had a lot of fun. And it was just beautiful. Going to the play yesterday for the, um, the Five and Dime play, the Dance of Deceit, was a blast. Um, this was like, it was dreamy. Just totally dreamy. So I'm really happy that I could be here for it. Thank you. All right. Uh, well, if you think last weekend was fun, wait until this coming weekend. We have all kinds of activities coming up uh, on May the 10th. Uh, and this sounds like kind of fun. The Cassville High School Jazz in the Park uh, around noon. Uh, that's on the 10th. Uh, Wednesday. Have, huh? Okay. Yeah. It's full it's moon night. So I, I haven't heard the Cashville group, but I think if they're coming down and playing our park, it should be probably pretty good uh, on there. So, and then the 12th through the 14th, the second annual Newt Rose Wine Festival. Uh, we'll have, uh, it says rose testing, but I think it's probably wine testing and pairing at various <laughs> times. Rosé. Rosé. Oh, Rosé. <laughs> what do I know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably, yeah. Didn't say Mogan David. Yeah. <laughs> Rosé tasting uh, and pairings. Oh, uh, Rica. Pairings. P-A-I-R-I-N-G-S. Not like pairings. 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 I got it. Yeah. Pairings with so, cheese. Yeah, I got it. Food. <laughs> with wine. Paired. Rosé and fruits. Pairings. So you have your nuts and wine. No. <laughs> Nut Rose Wine Festival. Nui. Nui. Nut Rose. <laughs> yeah. Whew, too many French words. Um, <laughs> when until I get down here to the other one. Uh, the Art in the Park. Uh, we got 513. Art in the Park. Artists showing and selling all the original works in the Basin Park. That would be real fun. That's on uh, 10 to 4. And then on the 13th, our own very own Janet Alexander is going to Come in and help you make your own mobile uh, mobile event. So that's also in the Basin Park to go along with the giant mobiles that we have there. And if you haven't seen the giant mobiles in the park, come on down. They're really <laughs> outstanding. They're, you know, great. They are just uh, one of a kind. And then also on the 13th, we'll have the Grand Gallery Stroll from 6 to 9 along Spring Street. And then here's a real wonderful event, too. It's the 13th that night. Uh, the Ozark Corral 20th Anniversary Concert. Try to get away. 730 at the auditorium. Students and kids are free. Got my tickets. So Terry would qualify. Uh, <laughs> down there. But, Thank you, teacher. Yep. Um, and then on the 14th, we have uh, John Tuhart's annual Mother Day concert. If you've never seen his audit Mother Day concert, this, he's outstanding too. So that will be at 2 o'clock at the auditorium. Uh, mothers are free, so come and pick out a mother. Uh, I don't know. Then on the 19th, we'll have the White Street Walk. Uh, and this is, how many years has the White Street Walk been going on? A long time. Long, long, long time. I was going to say. Yeah. People from all over northwest Arkansas and all over the state come for that. So it's going to start uh, probably, it says 4 o'clock, but I think they'll probably be starting more like 3 o'clock. So it ends at 10, and, you know, it's up on White Street. Uh, it's a lot of fun, a lot of good times, a lot of good art and uh, events and food going on. And then on the 19th through the 21st, we'll have the Mid-America Photo Symposium. Uh, Mid-America Photo Symposium. Oh, photo, okay. Photo. <laughs> uh, all day in the end of the Ozarks and out at Lake Leatherwood. 
On the 20th, we have Art in the Park. Again, the artist selling original works. And then on the 20th, we'll also have the Music in the Park with Grady Nichols, playing from 5 to 7. And on the 21st, this is one of my favorite, it's the 12th Annual Books in Bloom Literary Not Festival right. up at the Crescent Hotel from 12 to noon. If you've never been, it's always a great event, and if you love books, this is one not to miss. And then on the 21st through the 26th is the second annual Plein Air Art Festival. Uh, four days of people painting in and out of Eureka Springs. Again, a wonderful event that's going on. So we got a lot of things coming up between now and the next two weeks. Mickey. I'm afraid to ask, are we having blues on the 20th, the weekend of the 20th? I don't what? believe so. Blues? The Blues Festival? You know? That's I, it. Blues Festival's in June. June. I've got blues. I, well, I've got it written down for May. For blues I think it's, for no, May. it's June. It's yeah. June. Father's well, Day weekend. You're probably a month weird. Weird. Father's Day weekend. Yep. Okay. Yep. You're a month off. Okay. Okay. <laughs> anyway, that's all I have. So anything? Motion to adjourn. Get a second. All in favor, say five saying aye. Thank you all very much.